God morning. I was just telling the Holy Spirit how it's time to rock and roll. <laughs> how to rock your socks off. Rock everything, shake everything in your life. <laughs> That's not kingdom. That's not light. We gotta shake all that darkness out of you. How we shake that darkness out of you is that we drop the scepter of righteousness. We crash it with the scepter of righteousness. Righteousness, spirituality. Because at the end of the day, we know God the Father. Yahweh, the Father of lights, is just that. The Father of lights, or the Father of spirits. He's not the Father of flesh. He's not the Father of carnality. <clears throat> when the Bible talks about Jesus coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle, he is talking about a bride that he's gonna come back to without spot, which is sin, and without wrinkle, the evidence of the flesh, carnality. So that's why the rapture theory being soon, or the rapture theory period, can't be true. You know, a lot of people, a lot of the, the, the prophets nowadays in the false church are prophesying that uh, the rapture is coming. It's evident any day now. It's going to take place any day now. The Lord is going to rapture his church. He's going to rapture his people. And they will say he's going to rapture those without spot or wrinkle. The problem is if he was to do that, there'll be very, very few who are going to go. Because without spot, literally meaning without sin. And now we know that our spirit nature that the Lord has put in us, our spirit nature cannot sin. That seed can uh, uh, is not capable of corruption. It's the incorruptible seed, the Bible says. So it's not capable of sin. It's not capable of practicing sin. And you can read that in 1 John. But the flesh and the soul is capable because we are three-part being, spirit, soul, and body. Um, through the born-again through the born again um, experience, a third of us is redeemed. That's our spirit man. But our soul and our flesh has yet to be redeemed. You know, the battle on here, on, the battle here in a terrestrial plane on earth is for the soul. The, uh, the devil attacks, the, the devil is coming for our soul. So our soul is our mind, will live in emotion. So that's why he attacks the mind. He lies. His greatest power is deception. He attacks the mind, he attacks our soul so that we will give him our soul, so that we will believe enough of him and get enough deposits and enough of his lies and enough of his seeds in our soul that our whole soul will be filled with darkness. So we have to get it in us that to walk in this life we have got to let the incorruptible seed, DNA of God, the light rule and disciple our soul in our flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Warfare. I keep seeing warfare, warfare. And I keep seeing a lot of the brethren, a lot of brothers and sisters talking about different types of warfare. Understand something. You know, in John chapter 1, verse 17, um, it said Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ came, he came in the flesh. He came as grace and truth now a lot of us love the a lot of uh, believers christians love the grace part the empowerment and the divine favor of god but very few walk in the truth part um also john 4 24 says god is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in what spirit and in truth worshiping him in spirit is worship was worshiping him in truth why because the spiritual realm the spirit part of us is the truest and realest part of us so when we worship when we're living in the spirit when we worship in the spirit we are worshiping and living according to the truest form the truest form is the spiritual part of you not your flesh not your nationality not your gender and most certainly not your astrological astrological sign i mean please kingdom citizens children of light if i have to see another cringe worthy post from a believer about how they're about their zodi who they are in a zodiac or their zodiac sign i am literally going to flip my lid okay we are not 
We're not to be relating with the things of this world. We're not to be relating with the things of space. We're to be relating with the things of heaven. And in heaven, we're spiritual beings. On this earth, we're spiritual beings having human experiences. This flesh is a suit. It's like a, it's like the same suits that the, the astronauts, uh, when they go into outer space, they use those suits to get into outer, outer space, to get into realms unknown that the flesh itself can't handle. They have to wear a suit. Same thing here. See, we have got to, God has given us this corruptible suit because the only way he can advance his spiritual kingdom on this terrestrial natural plane is if he put his kingdom inside of a terrestrial and natural capsule or suit, which is why we have the flesh. You know, this, which is why Apostle Paul says the, co the corruptible cannot inherit the incorruptible. In other words, you know, flesh alone by itself could not, could not live in heaven. It'll die. It'll explode. It'll melt. So, spirit needed to be placed into a earthly terrestrial shell, which is our flesh. And that's why, and that's how he was able to do, defeat the kingdom of darkness. He, and he was able to eradicate sin and give back the kingdom to his people because that's what Adam and Eve lost. They lost their kingdom. They lost dominion over this earth when they fell. We got it back through Jesus Christ. We have it back. We're not fighting to get it back. We have it back. And now we take that authority here on earth through the kingdom that's in us. We release that kingdom. When we yield to the Holy Spirit, we release that kingdom. When we yield to the throne, to the bema seat of Jesus Christ, when we yield to and allow Jesus Christ to sit on our third eye pineal gland, the command center of our mind, command center of our hearts, and rule from there with an iron scepter. That's how we rule and we reign. And how we rule and reign, just like any other king, he has his soldiers. And the soldiers in our, at our disposal are the heavenly hosts, the angels. Now, when we get born again, we receive a measure of authority, a measure of faith, a measure of righteousness or spirituality. The seed that we receive, it starts off small, it starts off like a mustard seed, and that thing grows. It grows to the level of your obedience, to the level of your sacrifice. So you can only rule and reign according to the level that that mustard seed or your faith or your righteousness or your spirit man has grown, that authority has grown. Don't think for a second, because you're seeing a couple of people healed and you might cast out a devil or two, that you can go ahead and start ruling and reigning over cities. It doesn't work that way. If you're still struggling with sin, if you're still struggling with the lusts of the flesh and pride and the lusts of this world and you're still running back to idols, you, can't, you cannot rule and reign, I'm sorry. You, and even if you started ruling and reigning, you go back to those things, you won't be ruling and reigning any longer. You'll be buried, you will be buried in dirt, in smut, and in sand by fallen angels. That's why it's important, it's very important, and significant for us to stay high-minded or heavenly-minded so that we're not grounded and we're not in the sand because the more we stay in the sand and the more we stay grounded, the more the fallen angels can now begin to bury us more in more ground, in more sand, in more smut, and in more dirt. And we don't want that. We need to rise up out of the dirt, out of the sand, out of carnality because the flesh is dust, it's pretty much dust. You need to raise up out of that and get heavenly. And what is the, the food of the serpent? The food of the serpent is dust. The food of the serpent is the flesh. So as long as we stay carnal, is as long as it's, as, the, as Satan can, can um, eat us, or chew on us, or bite on us, and attack us with sickness, disease, with mental and emotional uh, illnesses, which are basically results and manifestations that we've been grounded um, <clears throat> too long, and that we were living by our emotions, and not by the spirit man, not by the word of God. The word of God, he's placed even above his name. In Psalms 19, it says, Psalms 119, it says, so how important is it to know the written logos or word of God is, well, did not Jesus use the written or the logos against Satan when he was tempted in the wilderness during his 40-day fast? Of course he did. That's So how much more do we need to do that? You know, it's it's it, it does make me cringe a little bit when, when I do hear brothers and sisters say we don't need the Bible or we don't really need the Bible. Um, yeah, you know, his laws are written in our hearts. Um, his word is written on our hearts, but to the amount that we actually know the logos and have that um, in our souls, we're not going to be able to apply that or to walk in that in our lives. 
So we have to know that logos. We have to have that. That that is that in accordance works with the spirit. That mixed with spirit, that mixed with faith will get the results because that's what it says in Hebrews. The reason why the original the children of Israel um, did not make it into the promised land is because they did not they did not, they did not mix the word with faith. Hallelujah. Warfare, warfare. So it's important to understand again, and I've talked about warfare before, but this seems to be something that the body of Christ is really lacking. Understand something, we have authority over all the works of the enemy. And depending upon, de depending upon how great your spirit man, or how great that incorruptible seed has grown in you, um, is how much authority you will have, how much authority you will be given. That's why Jesus Christ talks about with the talents. Those who have started off with three, ended off with five, they got added two more talents which talents it was a form of money or a resource but talents can be many other things and we'll find that out when we stand before the lord or we stand before the judgment the bema seat of jesus christ which we can do even now you know as we as we escalate or increase in our authority here on earth through our obedience and through sacrifice um, the lord will entrust us with more regions more cities and more angelic hosts. I mean, we can literally have control over millions, millions of angelic hosts. Isn't that what Jesus Christ said when he was standing before Pilate? When Pilate was getting a little arrogant with him, Jesus Christ said, please, sir, please, my dude. The only reason why you're able to even talk to me the way you're talking to me, and the reason why you guys were even able, or even able to put me, to whoop me, and put me on that cross, is because it's part of my calling, and I'm allowing you to do that. Do you not think that I can call down legions of angels right now to wipe you guys all out. Not like he really needs legions of angels to wipe out all those men. I mean, in the Old Testament, it talks about the angel of the Lord wiping out like 186,000 men overnight. I mean, come on now. That's how powerful the heavenly host is, which are at the disposal, which really makes me question why, as believers, some of, some of us um, are living so much fear so much bondage because we don't know who we are and we don't know what's at our disposal because we don't know the Father God and those of you who are watching my videos and read my posts who are Christians who are believers doesn't matter the semantics um, and you're and you're thinking I don't understand anything this guy is saying this guy is talking a whole bunch of nonsense I feel condemned when I read your posts Oh, I feel like I don't even know God when I read your posts. The problem is because you don't. That's probably why. And the reason why you're feeling that condemnation, which is really probably not condemnation, it's a conviction that's pushing you to know the Father more. That's pushing you to know the Godhead more. Let's not see, there's a thin line between condemnation and conviction. Let's not get it twisted. If you're a true believer, that what you're feeling is conviction, not condemnation. Because there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. So what you're feeling is con conviction. What you're feeling is a, a pushing or a compelling to go up higher because you've been, you've been in the sand too long. You've been grounded, uh, grounded in this world too long. And too many of God's people, too many, too many, are still grounded and are still playing in the sand, are still building sandcastle after sandcastle after sandcastle. And guess what? God the Father does not mind watching you build sandcastles. He's going to let you build those sandcastles till you get it out of your system, till you finally learn that the things of this world have nothing to do with the kingdom of God. Those who love this world are an enmity against God. That's what the Word of God says, is it not? So those of you who are chasing your dreams, chasing what you want to do, Chasing after the things of this world, chasing after worldly um, uh, accolades or rewards or fame. All you're doing is building on the sands of time. And the sands of time are always, are always rotating. So even when you build that castle on the sands of time, sooner or later that castle is going to slowly, slowly as the sand rotates through because of the wind and because of the waves, goes down into the sand, gets washed away, and becomes flat ground again for you to continue working on your sandcastle. So forget about the sandcastle, stop building on the flesh, and stop building on the soul, build on Christ, build on rock, rock meaning spirit. Okay, how do you build on the spirit? You keep your mind on things above, keep your minds on God's word, you speak in tongues. If you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, you ask for it. 
Come on now. You've been, you've been in church for 20, 30 years. You're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Something should tell you that you need to get out of that false church because that's just beginning Christianity. That's just foundational stuff, getting filled with the Holy Spirit. That's one of the first things that happened in the book of Acts. Amen. And listen, I'm not preaching down at you. And I'm not getting upset. I'm full of joy. I love the Lord, Father God. This is joy right now. This is fierce fire. This is truth. If you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, be filled in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Stop believing the lies. Tongues is not of the devil. Read your Bible. Let that be a sign to you, a sign to the unbeliever. When you speak in tongues, it's direct communication to God the Father. It builds our faith, builds our spirit, man. It's a wonderful thing to have. Do you need it to get into heaven? No. You believe and you get washed, your sins get washed, yes. And when you die, you go to heaven. But, to you, but the filling of the Holy Spirit is important to be a witness with, be a witness in power, Acts 1-8. You, you, you shouldn't even be trying to be a witness and trying to go out there in power if you have no power. You'll end up getting killed. You will die early. I'm telling you right now, the fallen angel and the demons will have a field day with you and snuff you out. Authority, people. And we only have authority through the Holy Spirit. That's how Jesus Christ did all the miracles that he did, cast out all those demons, all those works, most of which weren't even written because there's not enough room in any book in this world to write all the works that Jesus Christ did because a lot of his works weren't even seen. He was ruling and reigning and doing things that a lot of people didn't even see because the spirit man was so huge and electrical. Hallelujah. And that's what we need to do. Breathe in God. Breathe in the breath of life right now. Get huge and electrical. Let your spirit man get so huge that your bubble connects with every other bubble or every, every other uh, spirit man in your region, in your city. Where you are cleansing and sanctifying everybody in your region and in your city by, your, by, by them being in your spirit man. By them being in the river that's inside of you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to the risen King, King of glory, big brother, Jesus Christ. Ruling and reigning is what we're going to do this in this kingdom age. Get your authority up. Get your weight up. Get your glory up. Get the weight of glory up. And rule and reign. Be electrical in this time. That's what God needs. God is needs his people to step up. Stop being so damn carnal. Stop being like the rest. We're not here to fit in. We're, we're here to rule. We're here to get the world back and all the precious gemstones and buried treasure, which is all uh, the souls of all the people who are lost out here. We're here to get those back, redeem those things by him redeeming those things through us and restoring those things th through us until this whole world belongs to his king, his lord, the Christ and all the other saviors and Christs underneath him and kings and queens underneath him Obadiah 121 Hallelujah Amen because a kingdom principle is a king can give authority to whomever he pleases and whomever he chooses Everything belongs to him. All the land, all the territory belongs to him. But he can choose to allot that land and territory to whomever he chooses. Do you want to be one of those people? It's a big responsibility. But the rewards and being close to the Father and being close to the Godhead are priceless. And more important than any fame, any accolade that you can attain in this world. Amen. Glory. Love you guys. Um, enjoy your day in the glory stay in the presence practice his presence how you practice his presence is you stay Continually acknowledging that his presence is in you continue e Acknowledging through the fear of the Lord that every thought everything you look at everything you hear everything you speak is on the scrutinization and is being seen by The Almighty by Holy Spirit God the Father And allowing his his laws his spirit to have dominion over your soul and your flesh until ultimately it is taken full control and the evidence will be your flesh shining like the sun shining like the bright of the day just like Jesus did John chapter 17 mount of configuration his countenance was like that of the sun Acts chapter 9 when he knocks Apostle Paul off his ass and he was a big ball of light brighter than, brighter than a noonday sun 100% 100-fold transfiguration sonship right there in the mighty name of Jesus Christ.
receive the Spirit of the Lord. In Jesus' name, have a blessed day.